This whole question of identity and what happens to identity as individuals are moving through space is something that I'm really fascinated with. My own research focuses on the late 19th and 20th century when Ottoman Jews started leaving the Ottoman Empire. In doing this research and sort of tracing these individuals as they moved across space, I kept noticing that, say, somebody who was from Izmir would go first to France, to Paris, and then immigrate to New York, and then from New York to Mexico. But then every six months or so, they would do a return trip to New York or a return trip to Paris. And in these return trips, they would often stay with family members or friends who were living in New York or Paris, and they would send money back to their family that was still in Turkey. I saw that instead of being a sort of A to B migration, these were people who were very transnational and moving between all of these different countries. What I'm particularly interested in is the ways that these individuals play with how other people see them. Their assumptions about how other people read them based on their place of origin or the papers they hold. And so a lot of my work focuses on teasing out the ways that these migrating Sephardic individuals are able to almost game the systems that are in place against them. Within Mexico in the early 20th century, there was a lot of Francophilia, this sense that France was the paragon of civilization and culture. And so many of these Sephardic Jews coming from the Ottoman Empire knew French as a result of these French language alliance schools in the Ottoman Empire. And so when they got to Mexico, instead of saying that they were Ottoman or instead of saying that they were Turkish, because there was some social stigma in Mexico against people of that background, they would say that they were French. And so they would name their stores after Paris or after Lyon or after Marseille. The tools that, that these individuals had, the linguistic tools and the different connections they had with other Sephardic Jews in other places allowed them to do this sort of thing. So, you know, Sephardic Jews in Mexico who had relatives living in Paris, for example, would be able to get French merchandise sent to them by their relatives in Paris to sell in Mexico, which would help them further this sort of performance of being French. So it's that kind of interplay that I'm really interested in as well. By tracing one individual as he appears or as she appears in archives in Turkey and in Greece and Israel and France and the United States and Cuba and Mexico, you know, the same person as they're moving through all of these different spaces, it changes what we can learn about Jewish history. One of the things that I'm interested in doing in my work is looking beyond the paradigm of, of a Sephardic identity that's connected to a specific place, like Salonika or like Izmir. They had overlapping senses of identity and belonging and could somehow coexist in operating between all of these different places and being connected to all of these different places. <laughs>